So to, to what we usually do at the beginning of the interview is we just identify ourselves, and I'm Scott. This is uh, October 30th, 2013, and uh, we are interviewing uh, Lutisha Lee. Do you go by Titch? Tish. 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 <laughs> How do you spell that? T-I-C-H or S-H? T-I-S-H. You know, it's on some of the things that we had from Creative Sanford, it has C, and so I'm glad we asked. Oh, yes. Um, and so, first thing we do is just ask you, would you int mind introducing yourself to us? <laughs> well, just tell them your name. Tell them your name. My name is Patricia Lee, and I was born in Sanford in uh, 1923, and my house was built in 1926, and at growing up, I could walk everywhere. I could walk to school and uh, at that time uh, there were just three houses on the block and then in, um, I'm not sure when, but the Spencer house that was on the corner, it burned. It was the old house and it burned. So until 46, there was just this house and the one my aunt and uncle built. And then in 46, Braley Odom built more houses. And um, so things really did change, you know. You, you didn't have that many people here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you knew everybody. And now I go to town and I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed so. But, um, and I do have friends that I went to school with. And we try to go out once a week for dinner. And we graduated together in 42. <laughs> and that's when, um, my dad, mom and daddy gave me my cedar chest, and that's when um, mama crocheted me a bedspread, which I still have, and daddy wanted to make something, and that's when it was the beginning of the war, and they asked for scrap metal, and that's when they took, were taken out down the cannon. And Daddy was in the Legion, and he helped take it down. And he got the um, spoke from the wheel and made my rolling pin, which is the only rolling pin I have used all these years. And I'm giving it to Kathy, because she cooks, and she bakes cookies, and she rolls some. <laughs> she cooks as well, but I bake. I get the... Um Farmer's cooker. Farmer's cooker. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do the crock pot thing. Oh, great, great. So she gets that. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I've had a wonderful life. I really have. Been right here. Still have friends that I've had all my life. I've lost a lot. But when you reach 90, you, uh, you that happens, you know. So, and if I get sad, I just sit down and count my blessings, because I've got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I have three children, I have four grandchildren, I have four great-grandchildren, and I have wonderful in-laws. Everybody is good to me. And my husband took care of me. He's been gone 10 years. But I have somebody do the yard, I have a landscaper, I have a a cleaning service to do the house. So I just sit around and watch people work. <laughs> I don't work anymore. <laughs> well, we, we're putting you to work today because you're, you are our resident historian. And we're, we, we'd love to hear a little bit more about Sanford during World War II. Uh, you graduated from high school in 42. Yeah. And what are your memories of that period, of, of being in Sanford during the war? Well. Now, I was working during the war. I, I was a secretary at the ice plant. And, uh, and we, uh, we, I 
raced the cars that, you know, I didn't do it, but the people did. And uh, I kept the records. And uh, they took the, all the stuff to the troops and everything. These are railroad cars or, or mm -hmm. shipping cars? What, what kind of cars were they? They were railroad cars. Mm -hmm. Railroad cars. It was the, on the tracks, out 46. I don't, I think they still, they don't, I don't know if the ice plant's still there. Yeah, I don't know. Don't it think. was for years, but I don't think it is anymore. Yeah. And, um, and you were a secretary at, at yeah, the mm -hmm. high school? For a few years. It didn't really take. <laughs> <laughs> I just did what I was told. <laughs> and I, but, um, and in, in Sanford during the war, we, we had the base out here, and um, sometimes we dated the pilots, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Did, did you, um, were, were there local rallies or efforts to sort of rally the townspeople? Uh, you mentioned that they decided to melt the cannon because of the scrap metal drive. Do you remember much about the scrap metal drives and other things? Well, honey, I've got, I, I researched that. And there's the papers over there. Oh. Okay. And it, yeah, I wanted to know. And so are these, uh, okay, so these are some of the materials that you, you did your own research on this. You, yes, you went I down did. to the museum yeah. and. Um, and see, it says county leads others in scrap collection on per capita basis. And. Um, it, it was very interesting. It really was. And, and the Legion Pole, oh, I can't read. Legion it. Post will give up cannon and scrap drive. This is perfect. This is exactly mm -hmm. what we were it's, hoping yeah, to yeah. find. You've done the work for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I wanted to know what was, you know, and this was the Legion Hub. And she had pictures oh. made in, and a frame made and took a picture out to the Legion. And oh, see, wonderful. So they would know. Is this, that's is this right. also from the museum? Hmm? Is this from the museum or is this a... Well, um, this photograph. I, they took a picture. You see, they didn't have a picture out at the new Legion hut. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought they should have one. So I went and, and got a picture and of the cannon. And um, now, but I couldn't ever find out who that man was. Mm -hmm. I guess the ones that were there then were all gone. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who he was. But anyway, I had that um, copied and I framed it and I took it out and gave it to him. So they'd have a picture of the old Legion hut. That's wonderful. And they put it up. That is mm -hmm. wonderful. So anyway. This is great. And this, you, these pictures are from the museum. Is that where you found these? Yes, I oh, found them from the, from the paper. Great. Wow. And this is a uh, handwritten I note. I did that, and I can't read it now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, what are the, you wrote this for yourself, or? Yes, for me. And what was the, what was the event that led you to well, write that? Um, I think there was something in the, in the paper about the... Uh, you wanted to read it? Yeah, you can read it, maybe. It's about when Daddy decided to make... Oh, oh this was when um, deciding which precious keepsake you wanted. Oh. to write about from your cedar chest. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, how Granddaddy wanted you to have something that was from him and, and how he went about um, getting the, the spoke and yeah. making the making my roll, yeah. your rolling pin to go in your hope chest. That's, yeah. You wrote that up. And this I was just paper? wrote it up to put in the cedar chest. Oh, to put in the cedar chest. So, so did you write this? Yeah, when? so that people would know 
what you know, so that we would know where we came go. from. We would we would have a history of why she had it and where it came from. Mm -hmm. We'll call this um, <clears throat> I wanted him to know. See, Mama crocheted the bedspread, and Daddy wanted to put something in, mm -hmm. so I wrote it. And he wrote it down for us. So this is the rolling pin. Do you mind if yes. I lift oh, it? Sure. Oh, no, bring it on over. I just wrap it up. Okay. I haven't used it for a while. But she's going to use it and make Christmas cookies. Yes, I will. You can tell it's been used. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of biscuits. A lot, yeah. Biscuit, biscuit world was, and pies. Biscuits and pies are mainly what it did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mainly it was Daddy's biscuits. That's right. So when I read the story about this, we got to talking and, and uh, thought about, well, what made him think to make a rolling pin out of a spoke? <laughs> But he worked at a paper factory, correct? Correct. Yes. And so he would have been familiar with all the equipment that you could do this with. The milling, I think it's called milling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, he was superintendent of the Crown Paper Company. That's when they, they printed the uh, wrappers. That's when they wrapped fruit. Mm -hmm. It was individually wrapped for a long time. They don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they just pack it in boxes. Ship it off. But um, Daddy was there, so, and he was in the Legion, and when they were to send the cannon back, he went to help them dismantle it. And that's when he got the spoke and thought that's what he could do. He could make me a rolling pin, and that was in 42. Because everybody needed a rolling pin. <laughs> he was yeah. also a carpenter, oh. so he had worked with wood in building this house. And if, if you look on the floor, you'll see there's designs in the wood, and, and like my, back in the corner. My, uh, so he was that Daddy built for me when I was yeah oh. when I was four or five. But it's kind yeah. of so he was he was always thinking of things to do with wood and and something else to make and something to do. So I think that just came naturally mm -hmm. to. To do that, to do the rolling pin, something for her. It would go in a cedar tree. Yes. <laughs> it would fit. It would fit. Yeah. So, uh, do you know the story of the cannon? Like, what was the history of this cannon? Was this something? It was brought back from World War One. Well, it, yeah. When they built the Legion Hut, um, the, I don't know where they got the cannon, but um, <clears throat> they wanted a cannon from the. First World War, so I don't know where they got it. Now they've got a cannon out of the other, other Legion hut, and I don't know where they got it. I think they just feel that, you know, it's history. They had cannons, mm -hmm. but it's an old one. It's got wooden spokes, I think. I haven't gotten out of the car and examined it, but mm -hmm. I've ridden by. Uh, so, um, what other, do you have other memories of the home front during the war or the end of the war? Are there certain moments of that oh, period that really stand up? I the end of the war. Oh, there was a parade down First Street, and I remember being in, in a car, I don't know who was driving. And my cousins were with me, and everybody was screaming and hollering. And Mama remembered the end of the First World War, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how um, things were downtown then. Now, during this time, didn't Grandma and Aunt Marty still didn't they run the grocery store at that time? During the war, were they running it? Did they, they came in 1910. No, but did they still have the store in the 40s? Yes. Okay, well tell them about them having the store and one of the reasons like with during the wars they didn't have as much problem with food because they had a grocery store. Yeah, yeah they were but they also had rationing, you know. Mm -hmm. They rationed uh, meat, they rationed sugar, and um, I do remember that. They rationed shoes 
and tell them what happened with you. She has very tiny feet. Oh yeah, shoes were um, rationed. Isn't that funny? Rationed shoes. <laughs> But she had such a hard time finding shoes that everybody, whenever she would find them, they would give her their shoe coupon. What were they? A shoe coupon. A shoe coupon so that she could buy the shoes because she would, and she loved shoes. <laughs> yeah. It was hard for her to find them in her size, so if they found a pair that would fit her, they had to use somebody else's them. coupon to buy her a pair of shoes. Well, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Did you know soldiers who had, from Sanford, young men that yes. of your age? Yeah. I remember one of the boys in my class was killed. It was Fred Dyson. I remember that. I don't remember. And I remember a lot of them going to war. Huh. And then the base being nearby, what was, and you mentioned the pilots, uh, yeah. was <laughs> There are much, was there other kinds of connections to the base besides the kind of social connections? Well, um, several of my friends worked out there. And uh, I know Margie married one of the pilots. And um, a lot of them, you know, I met some of them through friends that worked there. But, um, we did I mean, they weren't there that long, you know. You just see them. And I know one time we went to New Smyrna, a, a group. A whole, I mean, it was usually in a group, you know. So. And you mentioned that after the war, how much Sanford changed. So you mentioned, I think, one of the all the building. Oh yeah. Construction yeah. in this yeah, area. Construction started. Houses we built. And so this little town you grew up in became, started to grow and grow. <laughs> yeah. And it's still growing. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Sanford was lucky because it was both on the river and it had the railroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one of the reasons it was able to flourish like it did. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a big hotel downtown. Well, now it's not the hotel anymore. It, um, it's the New Tribes Mission headquarters. Right world headquarters. It used to be the Mayfair Hotel and people would come and stay for the winter and that sort of thing. So it, you know, it drew a lot of people and brought them here to spend their money in Sanford while they were getting away from the cold. Mm -hmm. So um, you stayed. Uh, people have come and people have gone and you've been here. Uh, and why did you stay? What? It's home. <laughs> And I want to stay right here. And um, you're when, surrounded by uh, a lot of the artifacts of your life, all the great yeah. Uh, yeah. pieces Every, of furniture and art. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Aunt Marta's uh, <coughs> picture and bowl, when she came in 1910, <coughs> my grandfather was a doctor in Mount Olive, North Carolina. And when he died, um, he had made a, he had bought a, a small hotel and he made it into a, that's where he could take patients and it was like a small hospital. And that probably worked for him. But then he died and um, my uncle came down and he was, he's the one that started the grocery store. And his friend from here was up there. And he told my Uncle James he would sell him half of the grocery store and give his son the other half. And if he would come down. So they all decided to come in 1910. Now, <clears throat> Mama and Aunt Ruth and Grandma stayed up there till they got the house built on Laurel Avenue. It burned down at later. And um, so that's when they came and Mama went to grammar school to the high school. And then they built the new, what was, we went to junior high and it was the high school. And that's where Mama graduated in 1913. And <clears throat> so Uncle James had started the grocery store 
I mean, he was half old. But then the son didn't like it, and he sold his half. So it was over James's. And it was all during the war. And do you have memories of the store? Huh? Do you have memories or pictures of the store? Do you have any photographs of the store? You know, it's it's down, the building is still there. And it's where the Herald is, right on the corner of Palmetto and First Street. And back then, the city didn't decorate like they do now. And every um, owner of the store would. And I remember Daddy putting a hat tying a Christmas tree to the lamppost <laughs> and and decorating it for Aunt Marty. So, because Uncle James died pretty soon and Aunt Marty ran the grocery store. So. Yeah. Well, some of these stories, well, the one story that, that the creative sand, well, first I wanted to ask you a little bit about how you um, came to be interviewed for the creative Sanford play. Do you know the... My, I have a friend who was involved in Creative Sanford during both of the productions they've made so far and I went to school with her sister and so she knew me and she knew Mama and she knew that she must have some kind of story that she could tell <laughs> and so she said we need to interview Letitia. They came in and, and Yeah, so they came and started talking to her and that was the particular they story the they decided to go with. So they didn't know when they came about the rolling pin, they just... No, they just knew that she had things right. <laughs> and stories and she'd More been here her whole stuff. life. Yeah, that she, that she was born here and grew up here. So that's why they wanted to know her view of... I mean, they asked her lots of questions about lots of things right. and this was one of the things they felt they could incorporate into the play. Were you surprised that they chose to tell that story in the play? Yes, I mean, it was. <laughs> and it, it was just real neat. And, and they did it really good. Yes. And, they, and they, they told how Daddy did the rolling pin, you know. So, yeah, we were given front row seats. Yeah, and the original, uh, the first play, one of Mom's best friends had a story in it. So they, they got so many stories, they couldn't put them all in the first place, so they put them in, they made a second play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to have a third one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They said they're doing, still doing interviews. I think they're doing something. There. Yeah, they're going, they're getting ready to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so the other, I had a third area, just one other area that I forgot. I have my notes here. Um, um, well, let me ask my, my colleagues here. Other questions that you would like to ask? No? <laughs> So uh, we are also interested in this as a family story. So maybe I'll step off the couch here for a minute and just have, if I could ask the two of you to join your mom. And we'll, we'll sort of just talk about it as a, this is a family heirloom. Oh, wow. Just if you wanted to see some Fantastic. Okay. You sit in the middle Those of the old rolling pin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goody. Your rolling pin. This is my rolling pin. So if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves. Um, I'm Linda Malazowski. I'm the middle child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kathy Dingle. I'm the oldest. <laughs> so our brother's not here. <laughs> yeah, he's right. the baby. The baby. <laughs> yes. And so you, um, were you part of the, inter the original interview? I know you were because the, you had the connection to your friend. And right, so and you, I live here. And you live here. In Sanford. And so... Um, for you, this is a, a family heirloom, yes. and um, as you've told the story, it, you, you, your memory of this is not just something in a hope chest, but as some, uh, something your mom used and... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. we grew up with her doing that, and then eventually she told us all about it. But I mean, when somebody would say, go get the rolling pin, you knew what to get, because uh, <laughs> that was it. We had one rolling pin. <laughs> and I really remember mostly biscuits. Biscuits. And biscuits I remember and pies because I learned how to do pies. Yes, so I was we pie baking a lot of biscuits with it. So, <laughs> so for you, the memories attached to it are family memories, sure. not not World War II American Legion no. home front oh, no. sacrifices. No, no, it's Mama baking with it. 
right. using it. And she also made donuts. 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 <laughs> right. I had to roll them out and donuts. cut them with the donuts. little donut and then thing. Fry them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that that makes me think about is that people cooked like that all the time, yeah. and now it's more rare that you have a choice whether you want to do that. It's not mm -hmm. part of our everyday lives to have a rolling pin, but but you still, uh, I'm sorry, who's getting the rolling pin? Kathy, yeah, 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 Kathy. Kathy. you still cook. And you, oh, yes. yes. So does that make you feel connected in some way through the, in a, you know, through the sure. past? Yes, because, you know, I remember Mama using it, and I remember it, you know, in this house, I remember it in our other house, and, yeah, and my granddaughters will help me use it. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, one asked me last week, she says, are we going to get to make Christmas cookies and use a rolling pin? I said, yes, we are. <laughs> so they're, they're used to that. And um, do, you, do you also have things like recipes and cookbooks and things like that that are... Oh, yes. Part of this. We have a student in our class who's studying cookbooks. This oh. is actually a historical <laughs> subject and an oh, interesting yeah. one. Oh, there's so many. Oh, so many. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, what, one of the things that we've been thinking about in our class is the connection between personal stories and personal history. Mm -hmm. And then there's the community history, Sanford, and then there's you know, national and world oh. history. And I think that that's what's neat about this object, yes. is it connects all of them. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Um, sure. So we really thank you so much for sharing that story with us and sharing your time with us. Mm -hmm. The only, the other thing is if, if it would be okay with you for us to take still fo photographs of some of these objects uh, for inclusion in the exhibit. Sure. sure. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. Uh, no problem. Do you, do you want a, any, anything else that we should talk about on the... the no, okay. not the recording. I think we're... We're good? Good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Just one quick question, because we were talking about this before, was the um, fireless cooker. Fireless, fireless cooker. cooker, which is over there. But yeah. could you just tell us the story my, of the fireless? My son, um, he went online <coughs> to find out more about it. <coughs> and he said that in one of the years ago, presidents had one in his house. But now I don't remember. But tell, him, tell him where this one came from. This one came from uh, Miss Bessie. Yeah. And it what I already told Yeah, but, yeah, but they, they want a video. Want to they want to <laughs> tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell it again. Well, <clears throat> in 1910, when my aunt came down and she rode in Miss Bessie Longs, her mother, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Her mother had a boarding house, and she did not cook on Sunday, so she had the fireless cooker, that one, and um, she would put the, the, it's all there, every piece. And there's stones that have the thing to hook and put them in her fire. She had a wood stove. When they got hot, she'd put them in the fireless cooker. And then she would get her food hot on in the pans, put them in, and close it up, and it would cook all night. And when she came home from church on Sunday, she opened it up, and she could serve it, but she didn't have to cook. Mm -hmm. So that's what... And my husband was fascinated with it. I said, what do we do with it? He says, I don't care what we do with it. It's a chest. So it's been in the living room in the old house. I told you we owned the French house years ago. Yes. And that's where we raised the kids. Mm -hmm. Mama was still here in my aunts. And um, <clears throat> so um, where was I? You had it at the old house, and then you brought it here. Yeah, I, I had it in the living room over there, and then I brought it here. So the fireless cooker's always been in the living room. It's been a piece to, to show people. But we never used it. No, no. we've never used I, it. I plan on using it someday. Tell them about um, how they used to use them during the war, though. Oh, well, yeah. When Jimmy researched it, he said they were used during the First World War fireless cookers, mainly in tanks, so they could put the food in the cooker and then they could go wherever they were going and they would have their food. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, so we don't know where they got this one, but we're glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So, but that's, and they had, had in fact, I used to get the Reminisce magazine, and somebody had put theirs yeah. in. Only it was just a one, oh. but they made one, and they made two, and the ours is a three. Right. Mm -hmm. Three, whatever. Three pans. <laughs> three pots. Three pots. Yeah, yes. Three pots. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the French yeah. house. What, what was the address of the French house? Mm -hmm. um, 113 West 15th Street. Is it still there? It is. It is. Yeah. If it you go up Oak Avenue, mm -hmm. if you're going up Oak, when you have to go around, you would run the into house. the house. You run into the house oh, okay. if you went straight yeah. up. Mm -hmm. But yeah. My husband and I bought the house for mom and dad, and we lived there for quite a few years. We sold it when my son was about 13. Oh, okay. And, it, yeah, I, do you have the thing I from the when book. we sold it? Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is one of the the, the same French, the French Ave? And yeah, the, the French one. Avenue was his brother. Oh, okay. There was an A.J. Um, Seth and A.J. French. I don't know if I'm And the, um, the man who owned our house was the mayor. Mm -hmm. I think he was the second mayor. I think so. Um, I remember, but he was one of the first mayors of Sanford. Okay. Yeah. Great. But this was the house that was built by... Right, and my grandmother. grandmother was living here. I see. And then when mom and dad, when they first got married, we lived over in Orlando, and we moved over here I see. when we were like seven and eight years old. Mm -hmm. And they found that house was available, so right. they bought that house, and we were there. The whole family, from mm -hmm. when they bought it, and then when I sold it, we were there for over 50 years. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, this is great. I think, Andrew, we can... Uh, it will, we'll wrap up oh, the... Oh, she's right got here. the... Um, yeah, this is what I was oh, thinking. But this, it was on the Sanford Tour of Homes. Oh, Sanford oh, Tour of Homes last oh, year. Okay, I went two years ago. I didn't... Okay, yeah, there's the state. That's what it looks like mm -hmm. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it, it looked like that. When we, it, well, when Mom and Dad, when we were growing up, it was... Well,